Today we're looking at how a single VM with SQL Server containers and secure production database clones is combined with Git and the Azure DevOps pipeline to support an efficient continuous integration process. SQL Server containers and production database clones in Git work together in a series of steps. The first step is to build the database clone image. The image delivers writable secure production databases in seconds with minimal storage and will be used throughout the project. Once the image is available, developers can self-provision containers in steps two and three, and each will include the database clone, and they can begin work on the upgrade and rollback scripts. As work progresses, those scripts are committed to the source repo in step four. Developers stay in sync by provisioning fresh containers, as each will include a clone of the Git repo. And as the scripts are completed, ultimate dev branch is merged into the master triggering an automated build of the testing and staging environments on the Azure DevOps pipeline. And that's shown in steps five and six. Let's take a look at how this works. Here we are on the Windoc server looking at the web UI. And you can see that we have an image by the name of clone that we uh, built previously. Now, images are built using a Docker file. And you can see in this case that the Docker file specifies the use of a SQL Server 2016 environment. And we restored a full backup of the customer's database. And then we copied and ran a data masking script to provide us a secure uh, environment for development use. Uh, what makes this process unique is that we include a, the runtime when the containers are built. We include a command to clone our source repo into a scripts folder on each container. Now as a developer, let's uh, go ahead and provision an environment. You can see the image is a single database. I'm gonna assign a, a simple container name and have that delivered. Now the container will be del delivered with the uh, clone database mounted. I could optionally assign a port and an SA password if I chose, uh, but uh, we'll just work with the Windows authentication in this case. And uh, this will take 30 seconds to deliver. These images can easily scale to support 30 or 40 or more databases and multi terabytes in size. But whether it's five gigabytes or five terabytes, the time to deliver will be the same. And the storage uh, consumption on delivery is about 40 megabytes. Container's been delivered. I'm gonna go ahead and start it. And then we'll uh, access it with SQL Management Studio. And there you have it. Working with containers is just a terrifically efficient way to deliver environments for development and test. And we could have up to 50 of these environments on a single uh, four core server. Now let's assume that the uh, dev lead has decided that the developer's work is complete. And uh, she's gonna go ahead and merge the developer branch into master and trigger an automated uh, build of the testing and staging pipeline. Okay, we've come over to the Azure DevOps pipeline, and you can see that the merge has triggered a new automated build. Let's click and see how that's progressing. Okay, it has started, so that's good. Um, let's take a look at uh, our pipeline here. This is not uh, simply a, a demonstration, but this is really a production ready pipeline that we've built. You can see that uh, we secure a secure token to allow us to make the API calls to the uh, Windows host. Now in this case, we're operating with a hybrid cloud environment. So the Windows host is actually external in a, another data center. That's very uh, common setup for our uh, customers. In this case, the testing and staging pipeline does involve uh, building of a .NET app. Those are actually uh, on the Azure web app service. So we're working with a hybrid cloud environment for our CI process. Works very well, very common with our uh, clients. Now we've got a number of steps involved in building the SQL Server containers, building the .NET environments and running tests on those. So this is gonna take a number of minutes to complete. But well, one of the things we're doing is we're sharing the uh, pipeline with uh, our customers and interested parties. And we have a JSON ready to be shared. 
and you can see that what we've done is we've parameterized most of the settings involved in this pipeline. So it's really a pretty simple process to set up. You can obviously edit, make your choices in terms of the image names, the scripts that are involved, uh, and the credentials and the IP address and other things. Now, one of the things that's uh, pretty cool about uh, Azure DevOps is it's very straightforward to uh, import that JSON that we can share with you to uh, build a new pipeline. So let's do that. So I'm going to browse, and here's my uh, imported JSON. We're going to go ahead and import that. And just in a matter of seconds, it's there. Now I'm going to go ahead and set up a new pipeline. We're going to designate this as a hosted uh, pipeline. And we're simply going to save that. Now, this will take a couple of minutes to show up but it illustrates just how simple it is to uh, set up a new pipeline. Let's go back to the uh, build and see how things are progressing. So we'll click in here. You can see that it's uh, already uh, completed a number of stages. We're now building the first of the test.net environment. Now we have to go through the same number of steps to build the staging environment. Uh, you can see that the time taken to build the SQL Server environment is actually going to run more quickly than the .NET environment. And rather than uh, wait for this whole pipeline to complete, I'm going to go ahead and edit the video and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Okay, the uh, build is complete. Scroll down and we can see that this two-stage pipeline uh, completed without any errors. You can see that the process of building the SQL containers and testing them took about a minute, minute and a half, and then in total it took a couple of minutes for each of the uh, .NET environments. Now we have, in this case, it's a very simple .NET app. Um, but what we've done in the course of uh, just a handful of minutes is we've built uh, two SQL Server environments, uh, both with a 700 gigabyte database that was data masked. It included the scripts based on a manifest file that were applied for the testing and built that uh, the .NET apps and you know delivered a two-tier application environment, two stages of that in the course of five or six minutes. What we've accomplished here and handful of minutes as we've delivered that two-stage, two-tier uh, pipeline using SQL Server containers and the production database clone. And this is really one of the simplest, fastest, and most scalable solutions to approach SQL Server DevOps. You can use a single VM. You can use secure production data. It just is scalable to up to 40 or 50 of these environments on a single four core VM. And you can work with any SQL Server environment from SQL 2008 onward. And we also support SQL Server reporting services. And you can start on this today. Visit the Windocs website, download the free Windocs Community Edition, and drop us a note because we'd be happy to share the uh, Azure DevOps pipeline with you as well. Thanks for joining us today.